All right, uh, let's try graphing this system of inequalities. <clears throat> You'll notice there's three of them. Uh, so one of the things that I like to do to get started is number these guys, one, two, and three. And that way, if I have to mess around with them later, I'll, I'll know what I'm dealing with. Um, two and one look to me to be easier to graph than three, so I'm going to start with three. Um, and for uh, inequality 3, uh, there's a couple things I could do. I could get y all by itself, or I could use intercepts. Um, the thing is, is, y is already all by itself for inequality 1, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use intercepts for number 3. Um, if I set x equal to 0, then I can find the y-intercept of, of, of any equation um, that has an x and a y in it. So uh, I, when I do that, this guy becomes 3y is equal to 8, approximately. And <clears throat> then, of course, y equals 8 thirds. And 8 thirds uh, we could get as a decimal um, or as a mixed fraction. It's like, uh, it's like 2 and 2 thirds. Um, uh, also about 2.7 uh, approximately. Um, actually, maybe we'll put a little squiggly line to make that approximate. And then, uh, then we'll set y equal to 0. And with y equal to 0, we'll set 4x equal to 8. And that gets us a, a little bit uh, more of a straightforward number that we were hoping for, x equals 2. And from this, uh, we get two results. Uh, we get a point 0, 2.7. That's x, comma y. x is 0, y is 2.7. And we also get uh, x is 2 and y is 0. And uh, <clears throat> when we've got those two points for this, the, the, the line part of this inequality, all we got to do is graph those two points and put a line through it. So uh, let's see here, x is 0, y is 2.7, so that's about here, and uh, a, a, x is 2, y is 0, that's right about there, and then I'll go ahead and put a line through it. Oh, by the way, um, there's a crayon underneath this inequality symbol, so the line will be solid, not dashed. So the next one, uh, it's <clears throat> I could flip a coin and choose either one or two, but I think I'm going to do number one. Uh, well, that's just y equals mx plus b. So I'm going to take number one, and I'm going to uh, do, uh, we'll put a y-intercept at one. There we go. And then we have to rise two and run one. So I go up two over one, and up two over one. And then I should put a line through that. And again, there's, uh, there is a crayon, so the line is going to be solid. And then we have to put this last inequality on here. Uh, y is less than or equal to 8. And uh, <clears throat> let's see here. So that'll be, uh, whoa, uh, 8 is way the heck off my graph. So I didn't plan perfectly well for this. That's OK. Uh, I'm going to, for purposes of our video, uh, I'm going to go ahead and just, uh, uh, I'm going to sketch a lot. Uh, by the way, um, Hoy Vox, I'm going to remind you guys, uh, says, that uh, <clears throat> because it's going to be y equals 8, um, it will be a horizontal line. So I'm going to draw it up here. Okay, so the deal is, is that uh, um, th this, this line, I just drew this blue line, but I didn't put it quite high enough. I mean, obviously, if 4 is here and 6 is here, eh, I'm close. A 8 is just about here. Um, and uh, so what the deal is, is that what, now i got to look at these inequality symbols. I've got a shade everywhere above for uh, inequality 1. And by the way, inequality 1, um, let's make sure that we have that right. Um, I think I did that in red. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, it's the one with the y-intercept of 1. I'm going to label that guy right now as inequality 1. And then uh, this guy is clearly inequality 2, the, the blue guy up top. So, <clears throat> And then this other guy must be the inequality 3, of course. So now i got to figure out where I want to shade. So uh, I've got a shade above the, the inequality 1. Uh, y is greater than this. So y is greater than that. So let's see, uh, inequality 1. So I've got a shade kind of over here, but I don't know whether I need to shade um, uh, above this orange guy or below this orange guy. So for right now, I'm just going to make a note that this guy, I'm going to shade above. We'll see that in a sec. Uh, and then uh, and then the y is less than or equal to 8. That one is clearly uh, y is below, y is less than 8. So we'll shade below this line for sure. Uh, 
and uh, and then I got to see whether we end up shading uh, above the orange one or below and for this guy uh, there's a couple ways to figure that out one is I could get Y all by itself and figure out whether Y is above or below what whether Y is greater than or less than and that's pretty quick and easy so let's just do that so for inequality 3 um, we do uh, 3Y is uh, greater than or equal to minus 4x plus 8. All I did is subtract 4x from both sides and then divide both sides by 3. And when I do, if I divide both sides by 3, this inequality symbol will not flip. And so it must be y is greater than. So for this orange guy, uh, in, in, or I'm sorry, for inequality 3, this orange guy, we're going to shade above. So I'm just going to make a note for 3, we'll shade above. So we shade above the red, above the orange, below the blue. It turns out it's kind of this area over here. If I would have graphed this better, I would have gotten a nice, neat triangle. Okay, so <clears throat> now uh, it, w what does this mean? It means that if I go and I pick a point at random uh, amongst all of that, uh, what happens is um, any point uh, like this guy right here or this guy right here or this guy right here. All of those points, if I take the X and the Y and plug it into this guy, and then this guy, and then this guy, all of those should be true. And if I come over here, uh, outside the, uh, if I come outside of that shaded area, if I pick a point like this, and I take this X comma Y, and I plug it in here, here, and here, it might be true for one of them. In fact, it should be true for uh, inequality three. It should be, it should make this true. But, it, and by the way, it makes inequality two true as well. Um, but it's not going to make inequality one true. Inequality one only has solutions above here. So, um, um, the, the idea behind finding the solutions to this guy, behind graphing the system of inequalities, is to figure out where the shading overlaps and to call that area that's the, the, where the solutions are. And if we pick points in this area, we call them solutions.